Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at Mono Blue Spirits, updated with Mausoleum Wonder from the recent Explorer Anthology expansion, and this has been a huge boon for the deck. According to the stats on Untapped, this is currently the deck with the highest average win rate in Best of One Explorer, and mostly thanks to the addition of this one mana spirit that gets plus one plus one until end of turn whenever another spirit enters the battlefield under our control, so it can deal quite a bit of damage, and then we can also sacrifice it to counter target instant or sorcery spirit unless its controller pays X, where X is the Mausoleum Wanderer's power, and we can easily increase its power by flashing in various spirits, or maybe if we control a Supreme Phantom, the 1-3 Lord, with flying, giving other spirits we control plus one plus one, so having access to a two-mana Lord in this archetype is a very big deal. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, of course we have a few counter spells, which is our main way of interacting with the opponent's game plan. We've got one copy of Spell Pierce to kind of catch the opponent off guard, two copies of Lofty Denial countering a spell unless the opponent pays four, and then a full set of Geist Light Snare, which can potentially cost just a single blue mana. We get a one mana discount if we control a spirit and a one mana discount if we control an enchantment. And we do have the full set of Curious Obsession in our deck, so we can potentially enchant one of our small flyers, so we can start drawing extra cards if they hit the opponent, as well as getting a plus one plus one bonus. And then we can potentially cast a snare for just a single blue, countering a spell unless its controller pays three mana, which is very tricky for the opponent to play around. And then we have more ways of protecting our creatures with two copies of Slip Out the Back, which can phase out our creature and put a plus one counter on it, so it also preserves any enchantments that may be on that creature. And then our author interaction includes two copies of Fading Hope to bounce opposing creatures to maybe counter them on the way back, or just try to outrace our opponent in the meantime. And we can also do so thanks to Shacklegeist, which can tap opposing creatures down if we tap two of our spirits, and we've got lots of cheap spirits that we don't mind tapping down. And then we also have a way of protecting our spirits with a rattle chains as a 2-1 flyer with flash that when it comes down can give one of our creatures hexproof until end of turn, so that can also protect them from removal, especially if Cure's Obsession is involved. And then once rattle chains is in play, we can also play our other spirits as though they had flash, making it easier to keep up all our mana, either flashing in more spirits to add pressure or keeping up our counter spells if we need to use those instead. And then at one mana we've got a full set of Ascendant Spirit alongside a bunch of snow lands in our mana base, and this is another great mana sink, can play it early and then keep up a bunch of mana, either for our counter spells or to level up Ascendant Spirit, first into a 2-3 Spirit, then a 4-4 Spirit with flying, eventually adding more counters to it, drawing extra cards if it hits the opponent. And then we also have the full set of Spectral Sailor as another 1 mana spirit with flash, and this can also be activated in the late game to draw extra cards in those grindy matchups. And then our mana base, as we mentioned, includes Snowlands, 18 Snow-Covered Islands, and 3 copies of Faceless Haven, another payoff for including those Snowlands as a 4-3 that has all creature types, including Spirit, so it also gets pumped by Supreme Phantom, and we can also maybe attack with it, and then still tap down an opposing blocker using Shacklegeist's ability, so the Vigilance also comes in handy, and then one copy of Soaring City as an extra bounce spell. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems fine. Mausoleum Wanderer into Supreme Phantom, although up against a red aggro deck, which can be a tough matchup, especially on the draw. Opponent can easily take out our Wanderer with a Firebrand, which uh, weakens some of our tribal synergies. Although Firebrand attacking means Phantom can maybe pump our Wanderer so it survives. When I see a light up the stage, we can counter it with our Wanderer. Which is reasonable, as it is a 2 for 1 for the opponent. Yeah, let's go for it. And our opponent actually missing their second land drop. So let's play Supreme Phantom first, and then next turn we can see if we want to keep up a counter or add more to the board. We could maybe see a burn spell plus Firebrand take out Phantom, in which case our Wanderer is more likely to stick around. And that's exactly what our opponent does. Still missing a land drop. So let's play another Phantom. And then next turn we can pass with a whole bunch of counter spells up, ideally picking up a land so we can add a bit more pressure. Lava Runner 2-2 Hastes. It's gonna hang back. 
All right, I guess we'll just pass now with plenty of counter spells available as opposed to trying to play a wanderer and be tapped out. Opponent missing land drops does mean that their hand is full of spells, but same can be said for our hand. Another Lava Runner, that resolves. Gonna block and then maybe use our slip out the back to save Phantom from a burn spell. And then we'll have a Phantom that can profitably block Lava Runner. Alright, just a Soul Scar Mage. In that case, I probably want to counter a creature. Let's go with a Snare over Denial. And still no land, but another Phantom's not bad. So now both 2-4. And yeah, we'll hang back. Don't know if I'm blocking if our opponent attacks, as we don't have any protection available. But we can potentially just take the hit and then next turn keep our shields up. Unless our opponent's willing to use two burn spells on a phantom. Right, just a one lava runner attacking. Yeah, I'll take it. And a Paramancer, sure. So we are at 12, put onto burn deck. But they will have a hard time getting past our phantoms now. As we can keep up our protection spells. And then at some point we'll draw more lands, we can empty our hands and start racing in the air. Pyromancer attacks. Yeah, I'll block. And then most likely gonna slip out the back. Maybe they try and finish off our phantom. And a Kumano. Alright, finally picked up a land. So now which one drop do we want to add to the board? Wanderer versus Ascendant Spirit. Kind of liking Ascendant Spirit as we can start leveling it up as well. And I feel comfortable attacking with my 3-5 now. The advantage of our opponent's only having three lands is that our counter spells are gonna remain effective for quite some time. And a Chandra dressed to kill. We can take out pretty easily by just attacking, so I don't think we need to counter here. Can just level up Ascendant Spirits. Who needs a plan? Just improvise. Opponents empty handed. Alright, so I can level up Ascendant Spirit once more if I'd like. Add a Mausoleum Wander to the board. Kill Chandra. Take it from there. Yeah, don't hate that. Could get a lot more aggressive too if we want. This seems like the safest line. Just keep as many blockers back as possible while taking out Chandra. And then once we get to untap with Snare and Denial, I don't see my opponent coming back. Alright, and a Curious Obsession will make Geist Light Snare a single mana. So sure, we'll put it on Ascendant Spirits. As that's definitely gonna keep attacking. And do we want to send in anything else? Nah, Spirit's probably enough, and then next turn we can attack with the team to close out the game. And a uh, Rattle Chain's nice insurance as well. Opponent passes, and yep, that's the concession, still plenty of permission spells in hand. And yeah, just having slightly larger creatures than the opponents, the key to beating the aggressive decks. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Lots of one drops, can protect them with rattle chains. And uh, yeah, all the flash creatures also coming in handy. 
So we're gonna play Wanderer turn one. Can maybe pump it up next turn. Unless we think we need to keep up a guy slide snare. Code on the green whites could be maybe an Angel's deck, which is a tough matchup for us. Between all the flying creatures blocking our spirits and then the life gain making it difficult to race. And yeah, there's a turn to Bishop already. So we at least have Wonder to potentially counter Collected Company. And then the question here is, do I keep up Snare to counter a potential Valkyrie? Or do we try and hang on to Snare for later? I think I just hit for one and pass, since if they have the 2-4 Valkyrie, that's going to be difficult to get past at the moment. Hoping they just play like a Skyclave Apparition, it's going to be a Jada instead. Jada's also a problem, but... Yeah, I guess if we draw enough counter spells, we can get past the Jada with our current creatures, and then we can um, try to just make the ability less relevant if we can just counter whatever they play next. Alright, Haven's not bad. So I'm happy to attack with both here, and then potentially ambush Jada by flashing in a spirit to pump Mausoleum Wanderer. The bishop turning angels into 1-1 one -one spirits is also quite annoying. Alright, opponent takes it. In that case, I think I still flash in Sailor to add a little bit of extra damage. And pass with Snare and Rattle Chains available. Could have also been fine to just play a Wander main phase there. So we can pump it next turn without trying to set up an ambush. Inspiring Overseer, yeah, also quite annoying. Has a 3-2 that uh, gains life, draws cards. So I don't like having to counter Overseer since they definitely have more impactful cards. But uh, for now, it's probably our best option. Jada attacks, we'll take it. And a Supreme Phantom's not bad. Okay, well, we're out of counter spells, so no points pretending. Just play a bunch of creatures, attack, hope for the best. Opponent takes it, down to eights. Got a collected company covered, but Resplendent Angel and Valkyrie could still be bad. Another Overseer is acceptable. And a Guy Slide Snare, not a bad draw. I can pump both Wanderers at instant speed up to 4 power. So this might be a turn all creatures sideways situation. Let's say they try and block Phantom with Overseer and then... Jada maybe trades for like her vandal chains. How much damage can we deal? 10. If they don't block with Jada, we could kill them. And our opponent may not expect it. So I'm kind of liking an all-out attack since we need to close out the game as quickly as possible. Before the angels take over. So I'm hoping Jada doesn't block here. And yeah, they didn't block. So now two flash creatures pumping Mausoleum Wanderer could get us there. Exaxes, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, we managed to steal this one. Definitely a matchup that usually goes in favor of the Angels deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a very nice hand. Not a lot of interaction, but just a powerful curve of uh, spirits and lords to pump them up. And I'll hang on to Ascendant Spirit to potentially level it up the same turn we play it, in case of some early spot removal. Lofty Denial's not bad. Do we play a Supreme Phantom? Do we want to double spell Sailor or keep up Lofty Denial against Black Green? I think I do play Phantom, just to be mana efficient. It's easier to play our one drops and then maybe keep up Lofty Denial, especially when they have Flash. And then hope Phantom doesn't get Fatal pushed. 
And if we're putting some sort of fight rigging deck, then we don't need to keep up Denial turn 2, but turn 3 is kind of the critical turn where we can counter the namesake card. Alright, looks like a Grease Fang deck instead. Opponent's also playing Regisaur, so maybe a combo of Grease Fang, Parhelion plus Regisaur Fight Rigging, or maybe just a Fight Rigging Reanimator deck, who knows. But now we have a nice bit of pressure, and we can pass with a couple counter spells available to counter those key cards. And if our opponent doesn't present something worth countering, we can still flash in Spectral Sailor. Ideally pick up a third lane so we can play a threat and keep up counterspell mana. It's gonna be Grease Fang, that's worth countering even though there's no vehicle in the graveyard yet. I think I would still rather deal with it now. And let's use Lofty Denial, in case we pick up an enchantment we can cast this for one mana. Fading Hope, also useful. I think that still means we just pass with our Counterspell available. Opponent down to 12. If we counter Chariot and they have another Grease Fang, I can bounce it before it triggers to buy ourselves time and hopefully kill them in the air in the meantime. I think countering is still fine here. as it also uses more mana than just playing a Spectral Sailor. Shacklegeist. Alright, so now we need to add something to the board, and Ascendant Spirit means we can either Fading Hope or Spectral Sailor, if we need to bounce a creature. And then hopefully if we go Spectral Sailor into another Supreme Phantom, we can present Lethal for next turn. Opponent's got 5 mana. And can't stay away to bring back Grease Fang. That resolves. Just go full control so we can bounce Grease Fang before they move to combat. Since we don't want hasty chariots to happen. And then land is good to keep on top. And a Witherbloom commands. Okay. Not enough to take out one of our creatures, thanks to Supreme Phantom, so just gonna gain some life. Luckily for us, they didn't mill Parhelion, which would have been a problem. So now I can play Supreme Phantom plus Spectral Sailor, or we can level up Ascendant Spirits. Although our opponent can still jump on the ground, so we would have to level it up twice, which is probably not gonna happen at this point. Could also go Shackle Guys plus Sailor, tap down Stitcher Supplier. And then attack for 5, put them to 6, and then next turn Supreme Phantom, which may be the play. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. Use our two summoning sick creatures, and hit for 5, and hopefully next turn we can cross the finish line. Our opponent would need to mill Parhelion and bring it back, which is unlikely. And we got there. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand has quite a bit of potential with an early Cure Obsession. We are missing a Counterspell, but Randall Chains is a way to protect our enchanted creature as well. So I'll keep it. And then, I don't think I'm likely to play Cure Obsession on turn 2. Seems more like a turn 3... Play Curious Obsession and then keep up Rattle Chains alongside it. So turn 2, either Supreme Phantom or Shacklegeist. And a Dread Wanderer points towards Mono Black Aggro. Alright, so let us play, I think, Supreme Phantom, as it can block the Dread Wanderer profitably. And then hit for 3 after pumping our Mausoleum Wanderer. And now we could also potentially counter a Fatal Push on Supreme Phantom by sacrificing our Mausoleum Wanderer, which is probably worth it. So you could see Tenacious Underdog or something like a Scrap Heap's Crouncher here, or a couple more one drops. It's gonna be a Jadar instead. 
Alright, so maybe if this is more of a zombie synergy deck. And I get the chance to play Curse Obsession. Probably targeting Supreme Phantom, as we can now protect it with both Mausoleum Wonder and Rattle Chains. And start turning our creature sideways. And see what we draw. Soaring City. Now it's also possible I should have just played Shacklegeist main phase, get in an extra point of damage with our Mausoleum Wanderer. Since we have the Wanderer in play to protect Supreme Phantoms, we may not need the Rattle Chains to protect it here. Although if our opponent plays land and a 1-mana Fatal Push, our opponent can pay the 2 from Mausoleum Wanderer, so then Rattle Chains would still be useful. If our opponent doesn't play a removal spell and just taps out for a creature, I may still want to play Rattle Chains just to keep up the pressure, and then hope to draw into a counter spell with our Curious Obsession. Right, opponent going to fire off the Thought Seize. That's a tricky one. I guess we Rattle Chains, protecting Supreme Phantom, and then if they push we sack Wander in response. Right, that resolved swiftly. And Thoughtseize resolves taking Shacklegeist, as opposed to sacrificing Mausoleum Wanderer, which is already in play. And then we also have our Faceless Haven, which we can animate if we play our Snowland, which will hit 4 or 5, thanks to the plus 1 from Supreme Phantom. Opponent's gonna take 2 more damage here as well from Thoughtseize, so we could just easily win the race. So we'll take four as Jadar stays back. Can't attack into Rattle Chains. And a Champion of the Perished also pointing towards those zombie synergies. Geist Light Snare is an amazing draw. So now instead of animating Haven, we're just going to keep up our Snare instead. And we can Sorting City as well. And this is a Tutron Clock that the opponent's unlikely to beat. As we draw another counter spell. So on the board, we're not in any danger. Plus, we've got two counter spells. So we should be good to go. And I usually prefer using the more expensive counter spell first, so we can more easily keep up the one mana counter in later turns. Especially when uh, there's no real difference between the 3 or 4 mana, given that he put in stock on 2. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Couple Sailors to flash in early, Shackle guys to deal with opposing creatures alongside a Fading Hope, and a Denial to maybe take out a key combo piece, in case he puts on a more combo-oriented deck. Turn 1, Hive. And a Thought Seize, not what you like to see as the Spirit deck can take our Counterspell and now our opponent has perfect information, which is also a huge advantage. But at least we can add a Spectral Sailor to the board. And a Shacklegeist. Hit for one. And hope to draw something exciting off the top here. Put on to red-black, maybe mid-range. So deck with access to a lot of removal. Also gonna be tough for our spirit deck. Play another Shacklegeists. And yeah, we don't have a ton of early pressure. Underdog's fine. So they might be keeping up a fatal push as well. And then the question is, do we Sailor have them push Shacklegeist? Or do we pass, and then they're going to push in our turn, perhaps, at which point I need to Fading Hope my own creature, which is probably too much of a tempo loss that I cannot afford. So I'll just Flash and Sailor, and I'm sure the opponent's just going to kill Shackle guys before we get to untap. Either way, I can tap an Underdog here. Right, Spell Pierce is a cheap answer to Fatal Push, so punishing the opponent for maybe waiting on the Fatal Push here. So let's attack. Right, 
Yeah, I think they should have cast that end of turn. They were maybe hoping we put a Curious Obsession on one of our creatures, but it seemed obvious they had interaction if they played their underdog instead of the three mana giant. Can afford to take three from underdog. Gonna keep fading hope for more impactful creatures. Like maybe a token from Fable. And then we get to Scry as well. And then Supreme Phantom would be a great draw. More counter spells. Yeah, I'll take a Geist Light Snare, I think. Since we are currently winning the race. All the fur point finds more cheap interaction. That lets them remove a creature and add a threat to the board. We could quickly fall behind. There's creature lands to worry about as well. So we'll take three from Underdog. Something like a Harvester would be very bad for us if they can copy it with Reflection, so that's a must counter. Opponent passes, and a Faceless Haven's not bad. So we're most likely going to see a removal in our turn here. Can also activate Spectral Sailor for card draw. And the Bedevil taking out Shacklegeist. Do I counter this? It's not the most mana efficient Geist Light Snare, I could activate Sailor, but if we counter, hit the opponent for 4, then next turn we might have lethal if they fail to draw interaction. So I think we still counter here. And then hope they don't have more removal. They also need to respect Faceless Haven attacking them for 4. So that's going to limit how many creatures they can attack with. Which maybe buys us time to kill them with 1-1 uh, Spectral Sailors. And the air opponent explodes, so all things considered, they had a very serviceable draw. With plenty of cheap interaction between Thoughtseize, Fatal Push, the Stomp from Bonecrusher and Bedevil. But luckily we had just enough pressure here to keep them low enough and eventually fly over onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and seems pretty serviceable. Turn 1, I'm lacking Mausoleum Wanderer, so we can keep the Flash creatures for later, and maybe play them if we don't need to counter anything. Could use a little bit of extra pressure, perhaps. Or maybe a Curious Obsession to get ahead on cards, as we have ample ways to protect, even a Geist Light Snare to potentially play for 1 mana. So Supreme Phantom and Obsession are probably the best possible draws, alongside more counter spells. So turn one wonder, and let's see what he points up to. Mountain. Turn one mountain into Fervent Champion, so an aggro deck is bad news, but there's a Curse Obsession off the top. So we can play that, attack, and keep up a one mana Geist Light Snare plus Spectral Sailor, I think that's worth it. Even though sometimes we want to sacrifice our Mausoleum Wanderer. This is the exception. And a Spell Pierce can also be an answer to a burn spell like Stomp, maybe. So we'll take one. Now the red deck can easily still outrace us if they can add a bunch of creatures to the board. And a Burning Tree is one of those that can lead to an explosive start. So I might just want a Geist Light Snare here. Or we could Spectral Sailor. But I think I prefer slowing the opponent down. And then... Yeah, opponent already conceding. And it's easy to see why when we're drawing two cards per turn and can draw into more counter spells. So here I probably would have ended up playing Spectral Sailor main phase just to pump Wanderer, and then we still leave up Rattle Chains and Spell Pierce, and then yeah, we can potentially end of turn Rattle Chains if we're putting just adds a creature to the board, and hopefully draw into more ways to add pressure and find interaction for the opponent's threat, and completely take over the game, but it can be quite demoralizing facing an early Cure Obsession backed up by counter spells. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand missing a second land, but Double Wanderer and Sailor gives us access to a lot of cheap plays. Slip out the back to protect as well. Yeah, it's not the best hand, but I think I'll still give it a shot. 
A second land will go a long way. Curious Obsession would also be great. Kick things off with a Wanderer. Turn one Elf. Scary start from our opponent. Good, we're just gonna... Wanderer plus Sailor here, I think, as opposed to keep up Snare to try and counter their 3-drop, since that gives us a bit of added pressure. And hopefully their 3-drop uh, is not going to be too scary. So we'll main phase, play Sailor to get in for 3. And then we do want to use Snare before it expires. Heraldic Banner on green, okay. And another Mystic, so maybe an Elf Tribal deck. And yeah, these Geislight Snares are not looking great with her opponent having access to 5 mana already. Do I main phase Shackle Geist? I don't think so. Let's just hit for 3. And hope to use a Snare. Land first. So yeah, if they play a 3 drop, we won't be able to counter it. And this is how we can, however. Gladly. All right, Lofty Denial is a little bit better. So let's get in for three once more. And hope they keep tapping out for expensive cards like the Great Hench, which I can still snare. So luckily for us, they're playing into our game plan. So to keep up Denial or to Shackle Geist, we're hitting them for three. And next turn I can make it 5 by playing guys, so I think I keep up Denial one more turn. The 3 damage from Symbiosis being relevant. Gergroth, yeah, let's get that countered as well. Well, we got very lucky with how the uh, spells from our opponent lined up with our counters. And Wonder unable to counter either artifacts or planeswalkers, so... Threading the needle. But now a Shackle Geist is gonna cross the finish line for us, pumping Wander. And there we have it. Close game against Mono Green. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is a little bit light on action, I would say. No very impactful spirits to add to the board. To have a bit of interaction with Fading Hope and Denial. Can eventually start drawing with Sailor, but it's often. Not where we want to be. So I could actually see mulliganing this, despite seemingly being okay. Alright, this is better. And then I'll bottom a land, I think. Alright, so ideally we can enchant our creature with obsession, protect with rattle chains. Opponent maybe on a red aggro deck. Spikefield Hazard kills Sailor. Right, we'll have to play Supreme Phantom now. And then next turn we can Obsession protect with Rattle Chains, hoping Phantom survives. Burning Tree into another Burning Tree. Okay, what else? A Bone Crusher just going face. Luckily, three toughness enough to survive the two damage. Well, I don't love turning Phantom sideways instead of staying back to block, but that's probably what this hand calls for. And hopefully pick up another Supreme Phantom to play defense. Rattle Chains, okay. So we can flash that in just to trade for an Emissary, not ideal. Maybe better off trying to race. Although racing a red deck typically doesn't work out. At 4 Toughness, I don't expect our opponent trying to kill Phantom, and yeah, Annex is gonna resolve, so if they have an Ember Cleave, we're gonna be dead unless we draw a Counterspell. Alright, there's a Counterspell, that helps. So, let us probably attack with both, and then we can flash in Rattle Chains just to trade for Annex as well. There's also Faceless Haven to think about, but don't think it's gonna come in handy just yet. So let's attack. And the Mausoleum Wanderer is also useful. I think I still stick to the plan of Rattle Chains, trade for Annex, keep up Lofty Denial to counter anything else. All 
Alright, Chandra dressed to kill. That's not an Ember Cleave, so I think we let it resolve. Does add a bunch of devotion. You know what's great at dispelling darkness? A blazing inferno. And we can also flash in the Wanderer end of turn anyway, if we don't need to lofty denial here. And actually, I could have, since our opponent mostly tapped out, considered playing the Wanderer into Rattle Chains, which would have pumped Wanderer up to a 3-3 to block Emissary profitably. Of course, our opponent still has a card in hand, so if it's a burn spell, they could mess that up. So, still don't hate this line of play, but uh, could have maybe been optimized a little bit better. Chandra's gonna plus to add mana. And yeah, they had a lightning strike. So now I can either sacrifice my Mausoleum Wanderer to counter it or Lofty Denial. Opponents out of cards. I think I prefer countering with Lofty Denial. Although Cure Obsession doesn't draw if we attack Planeswalkers is a problem. Yeah, maybe... I should have uh, given my author Vandal Chains Hexproof instead here. Let's just do this for now. And then I may just have to attack Chandra, maybe using Faceless Haven. And then we can still flash in Wanderer to ambush a 1-1 one -one token. So this at Chandra. These face. Could also leave Rattle Chains back, but I think the 3 damage is still worth it. See what we draw. Wow. Not even a gift bag. Fading hope's not bad. Okay. So our opponent attacks. Now the question is keep a fading hope in case of an ember cleave or play wonder. And then five, six, seven. I could kill the opponent next turn if I draw another spirit. I guess there's also faceless haven. So I guess, hmm, how would this work? I take six, opponent plays Bone Crusher, I can bounce it end of turn, animate Haven, and kill them. And this also plays around Ember Cleave. So maybe I can just take it. This would still be bad if our opponent has a one mana creature, because then they would have two blockers with Bone Crusher. But nope, just Bone Crusher Giant. I guess what I didn't consider is my opponent being able to cast Stomp if I bounce Bone Crusher. So that's, I guess, removes Lethal. But I can still flash in a Wanderer. And then I can counter the uh, Stomp with a Wanderer, I suppose. So yeah, that should still work out. Animate Haven. Bounce Bone Crusher. Take two damage down to one. Attack with all. And wander to counter the stomp. Which cannot be prevented, the damage, but can be countered. Alright, so very close game here against Moderates, and we got to level up to Diamonds. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Double Ascendant Spirit, so I'm probably gonna play one right away. And next turn, could see myself playing Spirit plus Flash and Sailor to then pump the team with Phantom. Right, Farbrand might just take out Spirit here. But the next one we can also protect with Slip out the back. So I'm kind of hoping they try and kill it. It's gonna be a Kari Zav instead. So we'll flash and sailor. And then a Curious Obsession. If I put it on Ascendant Spirits, I can also play Phantom to attack past Kari Zav to start drawing. And at 3 toughness, it's unlikely that the opponent kills my spirit unless they're playing Lightning Strike, which is not that common. So don't hate that idea. I guess we have to worry about our opponent playing a ground creature that the spirit cannot attack past. And Curious Obsession does force us to attack. But we can always attack with a flyer to keep the obsession around. So, yeah, I'm kind of liking this line of play. And 
And then I'm unlikely to want to block Ragavan with uh, Supreme Phantom in case they can finish it off with like a Goblin Chain Whirler. But a uh, Lofty Denial, a great draw. So can maybe see an Annex here. But I'm gonna respect Chain Whirler and take the two. Alright, Annex it is. At least we can counter a potential Ember Cleave. So now the question is, do we want to attack with Ascendant Spirits? I guess I can just level it up to get past Annex so it can attack. And uh, what else do we want to attack with? Probably everything. And then if they just take it, hopefully we draw a land so we can double spell. Yeah, opponent's jumping so we can level up. And just eat an axe. They might have another one. Get to make some tokens in the process. So they can maybe try and put an Ember Cleave in play here. Alright, it's gonna be a robber for now. I guess they can still Ember Cleave as they would have four attacking creatures. Although I can slip out the back the creature they try and Ember Cleave, which is kind of unconventional, but maybe the play. We'll see how aggressive they get. I guess Robber stays back as it has reach. So no Amber Cleave to worry about. And uh, yeah, we'll take it. On tap. Shackle guys can tap down a blocker. Although... I think we're okay just... sending the team and keeping up Lofty Denial. And I'm okay if Sailor trades for Robber. Could have also considered using Slip out the bank just to get a counter on one of our creatures. End of turn. Yeah, opponent's jumping once again. And uh, yeah, I think I just pass. Can always level up Ascendant Spirit once more if we don't need to lofty denial anything. So they could play around a counterspell by activating Den. Which is maybe what they'll do. Alright. Let's see how that works out for them. Still at 13, so we can take a bit of a hit. Alright, Kari Zef stays back. Okay, so we're taking 5. And we're just gonna level up Spirit here, so it gains flying. And then 8, 9, our opponent's just dead on board. But we could even add a Phantom to the board just to make it even more. Sweet. So yeah, opponent tried their best to play around our counter spells. But yeah, even a high level Diamond player couldn't figure out a way around the power of Mono Blue Spirit. So deservingly at the top of the tier list at the moment. And definitely the fun police in Explorer right now. So play it with caution. Probably wouldn't play it against your best friends. But yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.